Hello there and welcome. In this episode we're going to add a few things to our zombies just to make things feel a bit more polished. We are going to add some blood effects and some sounds. But before we start with this I want to fix a small issue I've been noticing. Sometimes when we hover over an item and then we let go the item is still selected and this is really annoying, it doesn't look good, so we're going to fix this. Inside the update method of our interaction manager, we're going to scroll down to the area that we select a weapon and over here we're simply going to check if the item is no longer selected and if it's no longer selected, we're going to disable the outline. So before we enable the outline for the new item, we are going to disable the outline of the previous item if we have one. And we should do this to all the selectable types. So we're going to copy this and find the next item, which is an ammo box, paste it over here and just change the type. So instead of hovered weapon, we're going to use hovered ammo box. Then we're going to copy this, go over here to the throwables, And that's it. So now we're not going to get this weird thing that multiple things are selected or even that something is stayed selected when we no longer hover over it. The first thing we're going to do is add some kind of blood effect when we shoot our zombie. So we are going to use this free asset. Of course, this is a very simple asset. It's free, but you can use whatever asset that you want. So after you downloaded this, we can continue. Inside the folder that was imported, we are going to open the blood gush effects. And over here we can see a bunch of different prefabs. We are going to use the first one. So we're going to drag it into the scene. We're going to unpack it from being a prefab. Then we're going to expand it and we're going to delete the other systems. We're only going to leave A. So we're going to delete C and we're going to delete B. Now we're going to select the system itself. And over here we're going to disable the looping because we only want this to happen once. And we're also going to decrease the duration to be very quick, so 0.1. Then we're also going to increase the scale of this effect so it will be a bit more visible. So we're going to make it 2, 2, 2. Then we're going to take this entire effect and we're going to drag it into our prefabs folder and make a prefab out of it. Now because we want to be able to instantiate this effect on our zombie, we can just drag a reference to our zombie because the zombie itself will be instantiated at some point. So we're going to add this reference into the global references singleton. So we're going to expand the managers and we have our global references. We're going to open the script and inside we're going to have a reference for this effect. And we're going to drag the prefab into this slot. Next we're going to open our bullet script and inside the on collision enter we're going to find the area where we hit an enemy which is a zombie for now and we're going to add this effect. So after we deal damage we're simply going to call a method that is named create blood spray effect and we're going to generate it. Then we're simply going to copy all the content from the create bullet impact effect because it's going to be very similar. So we're simply going to select everything, control C and then control V. Then we also need the parameter. So we're going to copy this and place it inside. So now we can get the object we hit. Of course, we also need to pass the object we hit inside the calling of the method. Next, we need to change a few things over here. So instead of instantiating the bullet impact effect, we're going to instantiate the blood spray effect. And we can also rename this hole to be blood spray prefab. So now each time the bullet will hit the zombie and after it deals damage, it's going to create this effect. So we're going to see this effect 
where the bullet is hitting. So if you remember from previous episodes, our bullet has a lifetime. So after a certain amount of seconds, the bullet is going to get destroyed. Otherwise, we're simply going to have many bullet objects in our scene and it's going to impact the performance of the game. So the same way we want to destroy this effect after it's done because we don't need the actual object after the effect was visible, right? After the particle system played once. So we're going to create a new script and we're going to give it some kind of generic name like self destroy. So we can use this script on any item that we want and not only on the blood spray effect. Inside we're simply going to start some kind of coroutine that after a certain duration will destroy the object. Then we're going to select the blood spray effect and we're going to drag the self destroy script on it and we're going to give it a time of about two seconds before it gets destroyed. Then we're going to save the prefab and now if we go into our prefab folder we can see that it has the script. Before we test this out I want to fix another potential bug that can happen because right now when we kill the enemy and he's laying on the ground we can still shoot at it and it will run the death animation and we don't want this to happen. We basically want to disable the animator when the enemy is dead. So inside the enemy script we're going to add a new boolean and then when the enemy is dead over here we're going to set it to be true. Then inside the bullet script, we're simply going to check if the enemy is dead. And if he's dead, we're not going to deal any more damage to it. And then it will no longer play any kind of animation. So only if the enemy is not dead, then we're going to deal damage to it. And this means that if he's dead, there will be no animations because the animations happen only when we deal damage. So now we can run the game and let's pick up a weapon. And if we shoot the enemy, we can see the blood spray effect. And now the enemy is dead. And if we shoot at it, he will no longer glitch out and play the animation again. So obviously you can expand on it, you can add some kind of blood puddle or blood drips, whatever you want, but this is the basic way we do it and of course it's really up to the style of your game. The next thing we want to do in this episode is to add all the sound effects for the zombie. There are many different sound effects that we can add because the zombie has different states, he can walk, he can run, he can get hurt, he can die. So to deal with all of these effects I'm going to use an asset store package which is this zombie voice audio pack and it's free so you can find the link in the description so when you download this package you can find a folder over here and inside you can find different sounds for different situations so the first thing we need to do is go to our sound manager and over here we're going to add different audio clips for all of these sounds And we also want to add some kind of audio source that will be the zombie channel. So all of these clips are going to get played on this one channel. Next we need to add all the different clips inside the inspector and we also need to create this new zombie channel. So let's add a new audio source. Let's disable the play on awake and let's drag it inside the zombie channel and now we need to add all of these clips. So we're going to log this and open the asset pack and I'm simply going to choose some of them and add them to the different slots. Now that we have all of these sounds selected, we need to decide when we want to play them. 
So the easiest one will be the hurt and the death animation because we can find them over here inside the enemy script. Now just know that we are going to hard code these sounds over here, but as I discussed in a previous episode, this enemy script is a generic script for different kinds of enemies. So this is not only for the zombie. We do have a zombie script. So the right way to do it is to create some kind of meta that is going to check what is the kind of enemy and then play the appropriate hurt or death sound. But we're not going to deal with this because we still don't have other enemies. We only have one type of enemies. So we're going to hard code this sound over here. So when the zombie is dead, we are going to play the sound over here. And when he's getting hurt, we're going to play the sound over here. So all we need to do is go into our sound manager find the channel and then play one shot the clip that we want. So in our case, it's going to be the zombie death, but we need to get it again from the manager. So sound manager instance, zombie death. Then we're going to do the same thing. So copy all of this and find the hurt sound. For the walking, chasing and attacking sounds, we're going to open the zombie states because this is where he changes the states and this is the right place to play these sounds. So we don't want to do this in the enter of the state, but we want to do it inside the update. So over here, each time the frame is updated, we want to check if the sound is already playing. And if it's not playing, then we want to play the sound. And we're going to give it some kind of delay because we don't want to play it in loops over and over again. We want to have some kind of waiting time before each run. Then we're going to copy all of this and we're going to open the other state. So inside the chase state, we're going to do the same thing inside the update. But now we're going to change this to zombie chase. And we're going to do the same thing for the attack. So inside the attack state, inside the update. Now, of course, there's plenty other things that we can optimize. We can play around with the channels. We can decide for the right timing, but this is just a very general way to show you how to play these sounds and when to play these sounds. But of course, if you want to have a full polished game, you will have to fine tune all of these things. The next thing I want to do is go to the zombie channel audio source, which is the last one that we created. And I just want to reduce the volume because it should not be that strong. So we're going to set it at something low like 0 0.2 or even 0 0.3. So now let's see how it sounds. So as I told you, we need to do a few more optimizations because the sounds are all over the place, but it's not something that takes two minutes to do. It's something that you will have to sit on and play with. So the best thing I can do is, for example, for the attacking, we are not going to play any kind of delay. So we're simply going to take this and play the sound. When it's not playing, the same thing we're going to do for the chasing. We don't need any kind of delay. Maybe we can also go to the on exit and simply stop playing anything on the channel. So sound manager. 
So this way sounds from one state will not go to the other state. So let's do this over here and also inside the patrol. But these are just things that I'm thinking about from the top of my head. We can still find many more ways to optimize this. Now the reason that we are not hearing the sound that the zombie makes when he's getting hurt is because over here there's some kind of conflict between the zombie channel playing multiple clips. So because the different states are playing different sounds and then we also want to play this sound on the same channel, it creates some kind of problem. So a simple solution will be to just create another zombie channel. So inside the sound manager, you can simply create zombie channel two. Then you can simply add another audio source over here. Of course, make sure that the play on awake is disabled and that you lower the volume. And then for this, hurting sound, you're simply going to play it on the second channel. In this way, it's not going to create any kind of problem. You can also do it for the death sound, although we did not encounter any problem with the death sound, but this is just because everything is stopping when the zombie is dead. So let's take a pistol. So you can see that after a few changes, things are sounding much better. Of course, this is not a final polished game and I'm not a AAA studio, so I'm doing my best, but you can see that we already get good results with just a few sounds. And after all, this is not a sound tutorial, this is just a tutorial for an FPS game and I'm showing you how to add some sounds. Maybe in the future I'm going to have a comprehensive tutorial about sounds, about the sound manager, because right now if we play the zombie sound and we're standing far away, the player will still hear the zombie. And there is a thing in Unity that allows the player to hear sounds only when he's close enough inside some kind of range. So all of these things are a bit more advanced and they're going to be a part of some kind of future tutorial about sounds. But this is something that I cannot fit into this tutorial series. So that's all for this episode. We added some blood effects, we added some sound effects, and in the next episode we're going to deal with the player side. So when the player is going to get hurt, we're going to display some kind of effect. We're also going to have the player health displayed, so the player will know what is the amount of health he has left. And we're also going to deal with the death of the player. What happens if the player is getting hurt and loses all of his HP? He's going to die, we're going to play some kind of animation, and of course we can expand on it and have some kind of game over or respawn the player so all of this will happen in the next episode thank you for watching please subscribe if you're still not subscribed and i'll see you next time